<laughs> there, there were two old ladies lived in Morecambe once, and they, they'd never been out with a fella. They were frightened, the fellas, these two ladies. And they, ooh, they really locked themselves in the house, they had the groceries pushed through the letterbox and everything. <laughs> And they had a little cat called Minnie, and they wouldn't let the cat go out in case a Tom got it. They, had, they hated all the male sex, animals, or anything, you see, they didn't like them. And one day the milkman got his foot inside the door, because the milk bottle wouldn't go through the letterbox. <laughs> and it, <laughs> it finishes up, it finishes up, he's marrying one of these ladies. And the other one's scared to death, she says, I'm worried for you. Going off with a man like that, you must send me a telegram first thing in the morning, let me know you're all right. Telegram arrived, it said, Let Minnie out. <laughs> I must tell you about our next door neighbour. I'm not telling you which side in case he's watching the programme. But I've got... <laughs> he's mean, he's mean. He's one of them fellas who, if he's playing dominoes in a pub, he won't knock in case the waiter comes. You know? <laughs> You can always tell when they're expecting company because they've got a fork in the sugar bowl. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only fellow I know that can light a cigarette in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> he had to charter a plane, a private plane, to go to London for him and his wife because there were no regular services and he had to get there at this particular time and he begrudged paying all this money for this private aeroplane, he said to the pilot, he says, you are making a lot of money out of us. He said, charging all this just to fly us down to London. And he went on and on, and the pilot was fed up even before they took off. He said, look, I'll tell you one thing. He said, you and your wife sit in the back. He said, and if you're quiet all the way and never speak all the way to London, I'll fly you there for nothing. He said, but if you open your mouth once, it'll cost you double. Is it a deal? And the fella said, yes, it is, you see. So he's in the back there, and the pilot starts. He was looping the loop and whizzing it down and cutting the engine off and flying between chimneys and doing everything. The fella never said a word. He got to London, the pilot said, well, I hold my hands up. I didn't think anybody could go through that without speaking. And the fella said, you nearly got me once, he said. I nearly spoke. The pilot said, when was that? He said, when the wife fell out. <laughs> And I couldn't come dashing on tonight because I went to a party last night and had too much ale. It was a special occasion, it was my granddad's 103rd birthday party. He wasn't there, he died when he was 29. <laughs> Thought a lot of him. I always feel sorry for people who don't drink me. If you know anybody who doesn't drink, feel sorry for them because when they wake up in the morning, that's the best they're going to feel all day. <laughs> Those boozers improve as the day goes on. Looking forward to summer, getting away from it all for a while. I was in Morecambe a couple of years ago. Fourteen weeks in Morecambe. Somebody has to go there. <laughs> I lost the raffle. <laughs> <laughs> they put all the artists' names in a hat and Mr Delphont pulls them out and the ones who lose have to go to Morecambe. <laughs> it's a sort of cemetery with lights, isn't it? <laughs> Mad Gay City. <laughs> Stockport with C. <sea. laughs> if you want any excitement in Morecambe, they all go in the grocers and watch the bacon slicer. <laughs> Lovely girl she is. <laughs> Wednesday's the big day. They all turn out and watch the traffic lights change. <laughs> Half past ten it is if you don't want to miss it. <laughs> Doesn't last long. What a place. They don't bury the dead. They stand them up in bus shelters. <laughs> With a bingo ticket in their hand. <laughs> A fellow went for a job as a coal miner and it was on one of these little pits in the village miles from anywhere that the coal board knew nothing about, they'd forgotten all about it. But it was still there and he got this job and he said, I want my pit helmet with the light on it. He said, oh, we don't have that, we're only a little pit, we're not modernised yet. He said, you just put your cap on and you have a flash lamp. <laughs> so he says, oh, all right, that'll do. He said, where's my pick? He said, oh, we don't have picks, we're not that modernised here yet. He says, knife and fork. <laughs> They got his knife and fork and he said, where's the lift for going down? He said, oh, we don't have a lift. He said, you just slide down the rope. We're not modernised yet. 
So he got his knife and fork and his cap and his torch and he slid down the rope and he crawled under to the coal face and all the other fellas are there working and he saw a bat flying about and he got his fork and he pinned this bat to the wall and the foreman said, everybody out on strike! <laughs> He's sabotaged the cooling system. 